Welcome back, my little recusants, to another episode of Final Fantasy X to 100% Guide. On our route for sweet perfection, Made up your mind. we are ready to now hop through some really more in? of the main story. Has come. Spear Hunter Team Go. Uh -huh. Your friendly name. Huh? Yeah. What are we called now? <laughs> Poor brother. He's like, wait a second. Good point. What are we? Searching, flapping, neighboring, go wings. Such gusto. Seriously, I'm so moved. At any rate, let's go. The Go Wings' last mission. Let's do it. Hey, hey, hey! None of this last mission business. You hear? For me, it probably will be. Be careful. I'll be fine. We're just going to talk, after all. Mm. Save the Huggy Huggies for your triumphant return. Yes! Hug, hug, hug! Hug, hug, hug! Um, um hey, look what the boys thought of. That's right! Go, go, go! Go, Wings! So the guys have a pose and the girls have a pose and as I say, we are now diving into one of the holes in the far plane abyss. You could have chosen any of them. It doesn't impact the percentage. There is a hidden garment grid tied to completing the pads down with all of the tunnels, basically. But the first time we go down these tunnels, you're going to be faced with super bosses um, at different stages journeying down. And as I say, I will turn off encounters after a little while. But the, uh, the accessory we're after getting from defeating um, Trema, the Iron Duke, is absolutely unbelievably powerful so we're just equipping you know with the again break hp limit and uh garment grid and the break damage limit garment grid but if we're able to equip the iron dukes which i will do shortly after it literally comes equipped with boosting hp 100 percent boosting mp 100 percent and boosting nearly all stats by 100 and other stats by like 40 or something less than that anyway. But it is just an unbelievably powerful accessory that we will be giving to Yuna and we will be making Yuna a Dark Knight for these next couple of battles just because her nice AoE work. Darkness ability and her AoE Black Sky ability when paired with super massive statistics and her max level just makes the rest of these normal quote-unquote bosses and not the super bosses really trivial confident huh and i was about to say during the cutscene oh like brother just wants the huggy huggies for like later and then it's like oh then you have to go all ooh, huggy huggy hoo, hoo, and go all creepy in that so that was not ideal <laughs> that was not the vibe brother i was vibing with you until like you got weird about it child's play but as I say, you can switch off these encounters. But the reason I'm leaving them in is just because I'm still trying to get that bestiary completed. So the more fiends I find, the better. And speaking of filling out the bestiary, we actually have some dark aeons to fight. And the first one we fight, no matter what way we come down, we will land on this platform and face Dark Shiva. But ultimately, we are so high level and so, you know, well put together that Yuna can use Black Sky, Pain can use Catling Gun, 
and it's going to be a really quick finish, I'll be honest. And what's funny is, yeah, Cactar Gun can deal triple or quad nine, but Black Sky, when Yuna is this powerful, allows Yuna to basically do well over 10k damage. That's because she's doing 10 hits of 2000 damage. And, you know, we're after topping up pain with an elixir there from the stash. And Dark Shiva is dropped. So, easy peasy lemon squeezy. And on to the next one. The Besaid, or like the Valifor journey down to the bottom of the Fire Plane Abyss is actually like quite easy in a sense insofar as there's no tricky puzzles like let's give you an example the Kilika one which is obviously connected to Refreet um, that one has like fire you have to dodge and things like that but again this is just me being like where is this Iron Dukes situation I want to show you guys how strong Iron Dukes is and basically yeah look a hundred and everything, double HP, double MP, just crazy, crazy high stats. So we're after doubling our MP and nearly having two for five and everything. So those of you that have played 10 will kind of then be able to guess ahead as to what other dark Aeons we're going to be fighting in the Fire Plane Abyss. So as we know, Shiva, the Aeon of Makalania, Makalania Temple has been sunk. We haven't been able to go there, so her, I suppose, what's the word? Her whole situation with regards to, you know, fighting her faith is now in the far plane the abyss because we can't go to the temple normally. But... You know, who was other temple we couldn't go to see? Animas in Baj Temple. We had, we also weren't able to go see Remyon Temple, even though like we had the calm lands and Yuna could jump and Yuna could get on chocobos. So I really don't get why we didn't look at Remyon Temple. I thought it's one of the coolest areas of 10-2. But I mean look at that's not for me to, to decide, I suppose. But I thought it would have been really cool, but basically this uh, episode is going to be fighting all the Dark Aeons and making it to the bottom of the Far Plane Abyss and then running through a bunch of cutscenes basically. And this is where I decide, okay, let's just let's just get to the bottom of this uh, of this Far Plane Abyss. I'm kinda done with the encounters. I just want to get all these super bosses done relatively quickly. And as I say, you can even see the Ifrit way you know, this other trail that we'd be going down if we picked the Kilika Temple. All those little fire nodules and fire patches. But um, here we actually have, slightly out of order, we have the Maga Sisters. And there's no fighting them individually, so just like our Kamari run with his Ultima, we're going to have to fight all of these at the same time. But between Kane's massive and undodgeable Cactar gun and Yuna's. Um, oh god, that was actually an awful lot of damage with the Pisado. So we're gonna have to just uh, try and use this to give her haste. And then we're gonna hit up some Black Sky for some AoE damage. The Passado must be percentile because seeing the other guys attack and do thing do like 35 damage uh, makes me feel like Passado wouldn't have done that much damage if um, Pain had less HP. But yeah, AOE damage, zero MP, it's it's a nice combo. And again, we're just going to use Riku to throw Mega Potions from the stash. We aren't in the need for speed with these ones. We can just um, 
And then with the fireworks from pain, like just eviscerating um, Sandy and Mindy and now Cindy is gone as well. So another set of dark aeons down. And like, it's not surprising. We are level 99. We have done all the side quests. We have all of our abilities. So, like, what are we to expect, really? But with that, this arena gets exploded. And now it's kind of a small area where we'll always hop, skip, and jump it over. But again, we're just going down, down, down into the deeper depths of the abyss, into the depths of the far plane. But what's really interesting is the next couple of cutscenes allude to a shared universe in the Final Fantasy timeline, where 10 2 is a distant, distant prequel to 7. But I'll let that cutscene speak for itself. But here we have Anima. And just like um, Anima asked forgiveness of Yuna, now Yuna is asking forgiveness of Anima. And like the full circle of it all, like we had to strike down that Aeon when it was used by Seymour. And Seymour was like our biggest enemy and our biggest challenge and we like hated him. To now Yuna feeling absolute sorrow that she has to like, um, strike down a friend now. And Pain not even getting a lick in, like Yuna just soloing, one turn, one command, ending Anima with a black sky there, absolutely fabulous. But the reason we had to do Tremor first is because basically, and this is just where it's important, that we're aware that um, we need to beat Tremor before coming down the far plane. Yuna, I'm sorry. We weren't strong enough to stop him. We wanted to at least warn someone, but instead we were dragged into the darkness. We're no better than fiends. It's all right. Forgive us. Please, tell me, what is he? Shuyin? Just a shadow. It may look like him, but the real Shuyin died long ago. Even after a thousand years, his hate and misery linger on. His feelings grew so strong they began to act on their own. Eventually, they became a shadow, a shade that wants only to vanish, but cannot. Just a shadow. I can handle a shadow. Are you sure? Yes, leave it to me. I'll banish shadow with light. Light? Lens feelings. That's right. Call it love. And with that, we are in the flowery glade of the far plane where Yuna woke up all that time ago when she fell into one of the holes. And we get Yuna LeBlanc. Hey! <laughs> you certainly took your sweet time. Why are you here? Because the boss never goes against Lord Nuji's wishes. You found him? As we was heading in, we found the sphere addressed to the boss. He said, <clears throat> Don't follow me. Turn back now and wait for my return. Actually doing what you're told? How novel. What can I say? One look at Nuji Wuji's dashing visage on that sphere, and I was, oh, charmed. How could I say no to such a cutesy wootsy face?
What if he... Don't worry. If he knows you're waiting, he has a reason to come home. <sighs> and wait I shall. We'll tell him that you're waiting like a good girl. You do that, love. And don't forget to stress, good girl. So with that cutscene unlocked, we're able to go back to the Celsius and we are able to unlock a bunch of other cutscenes in the game because we should now have 95%, 94% completion. And by the time we finish up these other cutscenes, we end up with 95%. We get a final cutscene with Riku on the Celsius. And then we should then be at 96%, which at that point in time will mean we're completely finished with the game. It is just journeying into this far plane. It is defeating Shuyin and completing the game at this point. So we are just in the last moments of where we collect some cutscenes with the gang. What are you looking at? Far plane data. The more I study it, the more fascinating it gets. There's limitless energy swirling around in there. Limitless energy? The life force that flows through our planet, I think. With a little work, we could probably extract the energy in a usable form. Sweet! Of course, that'd take generations. That's no fun! Well, still, it is something worth shooting for. Think how much Spear would change if we ever got it to work. Maybe one day we could build a city full of light, one that never sleeps. No doubt about it. Just imagine. But I'll never get to see it, will I? Shinra! Don't make you no sad! Right, my bad. So that there was a little cutscene alluding to the fact that um, the Far Plane's energy might be the life stream energy in Seven and hinting at a bit of a shared universe there. But if we head to the cabin, we need to sleep once more to kind of reset the ship and it should allow other cutscenes to now play. But what's interesting is if we talk to Kali, she has a bit of a crush on brother and you know mm, it's mainly probably because he's shirtless let's be real what can we do for you you can go to the pet shop which allows you to rename the animals that yuna riku and pain have in their trainer form and now we have to listen to the high pillows kissing. I wouldn't sleep well either, you know. PDA is not the way. <laughs> but now that we've rested, when we go back to the cabin, we should see that Buddy and Brother are AWOL. They are not in their positions where you usually find them. And once you see that, you should then be able to hop back and go to the deck and get a special cutscene. And just head on down here, you should notice that Buddy and Brother are missing. And that comes at certain percentile thresholds. Like the game is basically like, if you've gotten to the Far Pain Abyss and beaten Tremor, and had all these other experience points, the then these final gatekeeping, you know, cutscenes of play. Bifa nemu pada andre guf kusa drag. Epa dud vid haf suspunk. Bama deep go dig for the sheet. Bume! Yo! Drek vitreed! Ow! Vimigek! Katuk du fu! Sheet? If winner her quack, do deed a lot out the crab. 
So we get another lovely Albed primer to add to our collection there, which is great. And if we now head back down again, there should be another cutscene where Riku isn't here, which she isn't. So now we know that we're able to go to the cabin. And when we go to the cabin there, we basically have this little silly confrontation with Sid, who's basically like, my unwed kids and unwed daughters shouldn't be like wandering around the world. They should be settling down and getting married. And he's like, all right, niece, time for some parenting. <laughs> Listen up, kids. I don't know what this fear hunter business is all about, but I won't tolerate unwed girls running around doing crazy stuff. Can't you be a little more, you know, ladylike? Get with it, Pops. Ugh, that is so primitive. Right? It doesn't matter what you say. Um, it's not going to impact the percentage at all. But I mean... I'm just gonna go against Sid because he fucking sold out Sonic. Old fart, that it can't keep up with the young. Eh? You said it, Pops. Why don't you sit back and leave the mother dying to us? You're the one I'm worried about most, you mohawk moron. So no. Actually, Pops on the mark for once. Stop picking on your brother. Hey, what is that? I was born in Bevel, I grew up in Besaid, and I suppose this ship is my home now. Well, no, not just here. When I think of all the places we saw in our journey, now each and every one of them feels like home to me. And then Sid's basically like, I don't give a toot anymore. Do whatever you want. And it's like, come on, Sid. But now there's just one more cutscene to find. And sometimes it can be a bit finicky as to when it works. So if you go back to the bridge and Riku isn't there, it means you're experiencing this little hiccup with the whole situation. So you can either have another nap in the cabin or you can head down, talk to Buddy and go back to Bavel, specifically go back to floor 100 and then re-enter the airship and then it should have it that Riku loads in on the deck here. So again, if you're not sure, you can try sleeping at the cabin. But what I did, because when I went back to the deck, it brought me straight back to the bridge. I just went straight to Buddy, went to Bavel, went to floor 100 of the Via Infinito, and then returned immediately. Because look, we're at 95, and you need 95% for this cutscene to appear. So once again, I'm not sure if it's just seeing 95%. And if I went back straight away, it would have reloaded Riku into the proper position. But just this worked for me, so if you're struggling, you can you can look at it too that way. I just went to Floor Infinity, and I went back. And then it was just the case of, okay, I'll head back to the airship, and it loaded for me. This cutscene is going to be the end of the episode. But once I have completed that cutscene, we have 96%. And it is just the case of finishing Vegnagon will give you the 100% trophy. The next episode I'm going to basically be getting to Vegnagon and showing you a quick uh, way to get an extra garment grid. But other than that, that's going to be the episode. Thanks so much guys, have a good one. What's wrong? It's just... Why do I always feel like I'm being left behind? Uni, you're changing. 
You want to change, and paint's changed a whole bunch. <sighs> but, Riku, I have you to thank for that. If you hadn't invited me along, I might never have left Besaid. And the way I was before, I could never have lived like this. So, I think next time... Next time? Yeah, next time will be your story. Ooh, really? What kind of story? Hmm, well, let's see. How's that for a beginning? Do I get a hunky boy in my story? Need one? Yep, yep! <laughs> I wonder what brother would say. Uh, he's not invited. <laughs> I'll come up with something, I guess. <laughs> you will, Riku. If anyone can do it, you can. 